Of course, the main job of a tenoning jig is to cut a tenon on the end of a workpiece, but this jig works a little bit differently than the sled you showed earlier. Here, the workpiece is held vertically. Well, and a nice feature in that is that it gives you a very smooth cheek cut, unlike the ridged cut that I got when I was using the sled. And the way this tenoning jig works is that it slides on the rip fence like this to make the cut. It also means that to control the size of the tenon, you just have to readjust the position of the rip fence. Well, and speaking of adjustability, the jig has this back fence that you can adjust to fit really any rip fence, and it lets you tweak the jig in response to any changes in humidity you might have in your workshop. That way it won't get too tight or too sloppy. Well, let's take a look at how the jig goes together. Sounds good. It starts with this tall front fence that has a dado in it to accept a horizontal piece. There you go. Just like that. Well, and then you can bring in the adjustable back fence, and it has holes drilled in it to accept these hanger bolts. They have wood threads on one end and machine threads on the other. So once you thread them down into the hole, then they'll accept the locking knobs. After that, bring in a couple of braces, and the main part of the jig is just about complete. Well, and the key to making this jig adjustable are these slots that you cut in the horizontal piece. Now, since it's a stopped cut, it might be a little tricky to make, but there's actually an easy way to do it over at the router table. To make a stopped cut like this slot, I like to use the router table. The first thing to do is to drill a pair of starter holes at each end of the slot. Now, these starter holes are going to do two things. The first thing is that it creates an entry point for the router bit. The second thing is that it allows me to set up the router table fence and a pair of stop blocks. With the workpiece over the bit, I can use it to set the position of the router table fence. All I have to do is slide the fence up to the edge of the workpiece, like this, and lock it down. Now I can also set the position of one of the stop blocks. On this side, I just have to slide the stop block up to the edge of the workpiece again and lock it down. Now to set the stop block for the other end of the slot, I'm going to use the other starter hole that I drilled and lower that over the bit and then slide the stop block in place. I'm just about ready to start routing, but there's one more thing I want to mention, and that's the router bit height. You don't want to make this cut in one pass. Instead, take it in several passes. For the first pass, I've set the router bit to a quarter of an inch cut. To route the slot, I'm going to brace the workpiece against the first stop block and the router table fence and lower the workpiece over the bit. Then, just slide the workpiece along until it touches the other stop block and turn off the router table. Okay, that takes care of the first pass. Now all I'm going to do is raise the bit and repeat the process until I complete the slot. You know, Phil, a simple thing like cutting a slot actually requires a little bit of thought and a good technique. Well, and the slots are key to making sure that this jig works great on any kind of rip fence. And once you have the slots complete, you can assemble the whole jig. All right. Once it's on the rip fence and running smoothly, you still need a way to hold the workpiece in order to make the cut. Well, the key here is this stop. It actually holds the workpiece in place during the cut. And don't forget there's another important thing the stop does, and that's to prevent chip out as the blade exits the cut. Now, the most important stop in my shop is this one here. Holds the workpiece 90 degrees to the table. Well, exactly 90 degrees, so you have to position that stop accurately. Exactly, and the way we did that is to drill a pair of holes in the stop to start with. Then you can slip that first hole over the hanger bolt, use the second hole to drill this hole in the fence. And to make sure it's exactly 90 degrees, I like to use one of these drafting triangles, and it's exactly positioned. Now, once everything's set, then this jig is ready to start cutting tenons. Once you have the tenoning jig complete, cutting a tenon on the end of a workpiece like this is a snap. It's really all about making the cuts in the right order. Now, let me show you what I mean. The first step is to cut clean, crisp shoulders all the way around the edges of the workpiece. Now that's going to give you a tight, seamless fit against the mortise in the workpiece. Now to do this, I've already installed my saw blade and a zero clearance insert. Now that's going to prevent chip out on the bottom edge. Now to support the workpiece along the back edge and prevent chip out there, I have an auxiliary fence attached to my miter gauge. Now the first part about setting this up is making sure that I set the length of my tenon here from the end to the shoulder. Now to do that, I'm going to use the rip fence and make sure that inch and a half distance from the fence to the outside edge of the blade matches. 
And I've already set the depth of cut for my shoulder at about a quarter of an inch. Now with all that set, I'm ready to make a cut. With the workpiece tight against the auxiliary fence, in the end, firmly against the rip fence, I'll cut the long shoulders first. Then, I'll just flip the workpiece over to make a cut along the opposite face. Now to complete the shoulder cuts, I'll just stand the workpiece on edge and repeat the process of making a cut on each edge to complete the shoulder. Well, that takes care of the shoulder cuts. Let's take a look. As you can see, they're clean and crisp, so I'm gonna get a good fit. Now I'm ready to cut the cheeks of the tenon. Now to do that, I'm gonna to need to make a pass across each face of the workpiece. Now I'm not gonna need the miter gauge for that anymore, so let me just get that out of the way. Bring in the tenon jig, and that's where this really shines. Because what I can do is clamp my workpiece in place so it'll be nice and secure as I make the cut. Now the first step is to raise the saw blade I'm going to slide my rip fence over, and I'm going to use my workpiece as a gauge. I'm just going to raise the saw blade, and what I'm looking for here is make sure the saw blade cuts through the tenon completely, but that it's just below the shoulder. Now with my blade height set, there's one thing I want to point out. Besides the blade being 90 degrees to the table, it's always a good idea to check that the face of your jig is 90 degrees to the table as well. This way you can be sure you're going to get a tenon of a consistent thickness. Now with that set, all I need to do now is adjust my rip vents to make sure that the inside edge of my saw blade lines up with my layout line. Well, that looks pretty good. Now the nice thing about this setup is the waste piece is going to fall to the outside of the blade, so I don't have to worry about it being trapped between the jig and the saw blade. The other thing is, the layout lines are, get you close on the tenon thickness, but it's always a good idea to use a test work piece and sneak up on the final thickness. Well, I'm ready to make the cut. After making the first cheek cut, I want to make sure to pull the jig and work piece well behind the blade. After unclamping the work piece and flipping it around and reclamping it in place, I can make my second cheek cut to complete the tenon. Well, that takes care of the cheek cuts. Well, let's take a look. As you can see, the jig leaves a nice, smooth, clean tenon, and that's going to give me a good glue joint. Now I can check the fit. You know, that looks pretty good. Now, if I needed to adjust the fit, I'd simply remove the rip fence one way or the other, make another test cut, and check the fit again, and zero in on that final thickness. Since this fit looks pretty good, all that's left to do is put some layout lines on my cheek to define the edge cuts to match the final width of the tenon. Now, I can use the jig to make those cuts, but as you can see, I'm not going to be able to use the clamp because of the width of my workpiece. But that's not a problem. I'll just remove the clamp, get that out of the way, and then I can just use a hand clamp and secure it to the jig. Now I just need to adjust my rip fence, line up the inside edge of the blade with my layout line once again, and I'm ready to make the cut. The process is the same as before. I'll make a single pass to remove one edge, then I'll pull the jig and workpiece back, flip it around, reclamp it to the jig, and make a second pass to complete the tenon to its final width. Well, that completes the tenon. All that's left to do now is check the fit. There we go, a perfect fitting tenon. And once the jig's set up, I can cut as many as I need. Well, Don, this jig makes quick work of cutting the tenons, create a snug fitting mortise and tenon joint. Well, it's great when you have to cut a whole lot of joints. You know, especially when you're doing a lot of frames or doors. Right. Well, it's also good for another joint, and that's called a bridle joint. It looks something like this. Now, the nice part about this joint is it's cut in thirds, so you have a lot of ingrain for a nice decorative look. You know, it's a great look, but I'm sure the process for cutting that joint's a little bit different. <laughs> okay. It's a lot different. In fact, it's exactly the opposite. So let me go over the table saw and get to work. 
Typically when I'm making a mortise and tenon joint, I make the mortise first and then cut the tenon to fit. But when I'm making an open mortise and tenon or a bridle joint, I want to do exactly the opposite. That is, cut the tenon first and then cut the mortise to fit. Now this all starts out just the way Brian did earlier, by cutting shoulders on two faces of the piece for the tenon. Then installing that piece in the tenon jig. Now I switched over in this case to a rip blade that makes a flat bottom cut. And I can make one cut on one face, flip the piece around, and make a second cut on the second face. With these two passes cut, I've established the thickness of the tenon. Now all I have to do is make the mortise. And there's no measuring involved here. I just install the piece for the mortise in the tenon jig and clamp it down. Now this is where that rip blade comes in handy. It makes a nice flat bottom kerf for a flat bottom mortise. So all I have to do is move the jig over so it's just the blade is just inside the layout lines for the mortise. Now I can make one pass and flip the piece around and make a second pass. Then I'll repeat those passes to widen out the mortise. After the mortise is widened out, I can take it out of the jig and then check the fit on the tenon. And there, a perfect bridle joint. Woodsmithplans.com. Hundreds of professional, high-quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy-to-download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions, full-color photos, illustrations, and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides, Plus, we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever, cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts, all fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. Woodsmithplans.com, everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.